Thanks very much. I've come up for the right one now. I was, um, you'll find me on page eight. Gavin has kindly put me as a mouse instead of my picture. So I thought I'd give you a rough guide as to trials. I thought I'd be your tour guide. Because trials are talked about a lot. I'm a great trial enthusiast. But maybe just explain some of the vocabulary and the terms about trials and pepper it with some uh, highlights over the next, over the last year and what's coming up this year. So I went to the, uh, the Rough Guide website. Uh, I'm sure we'd all like to be part of that particular world party. <laughs> Maybe the Rolling Stones conference. So doing a trial, I think an excellent analogy is running a race. And I'm going to use a horse race as my analogy. And there are three components. There are the runners and riders, which are the drugs. They don't have to be the drugs. It could be an intervention. It could be psychological treatment. It could be whatever you want. It's whatever you want to test. That is your runner and rider. And then we have the course. Typically, it's the time of the trial. Two years for a phase two trial, three years for a phase three trial, something like that. That's the course you're going round. And then what are you going to measure? What are you going to measure? And really, in a, in a horse race, of course, we measure the winner. What is the winner? What outcome are we going to judge the winner in a trial? For example, some beneficial effect on the MRI scan, some beneficial effect on disability, however you d define disability, which is complicated, as you know, in multiple sclerosis. And then what are you comparing it against? The two drugs, the placebo. I'm going to explain what the placebo is. So use a horse runner analogy when you're thinking about trials, because I think it's a, a good one. And here are some horses. I am not a great horse enthusiast, but uh, lots of people bet on horses, so think about horses, because that's sort of what you're doing in a trial. Classically, it's a two-horse race. That is the drug you're interested in or the intervention you're interested in versus a placebo if there's no proven treatment or versus what you think is the current best treatment. So in relapsing remitting MS, we're fortunate with treatments, for example, the beta ferons and the new oral agents, monoclonal and antibodies. So we've moved on from placebo-controlled trials. And the drugs, the trials you see these days will be add-on trials or versus beta interferon. And that's a great position to be in. In progressive MS, both primary and secondary, we're still in the placebo-controlled trial uh, design, the dummy, the dummy stage. What's a placebo? So I looked up placebo on the website, and I find a band which you young people will know of. I had never heard of it. Maybe the, the red, you'll, you'll know, won't you? Yes, yeah, someone young there. Um, <laughs> I never heard of it. So that's what you get if you put placebo into the website. Really scientifically, what it is is a, is a, is a dummy because you need a dummy, because there's a lot of bias when we do trials. People want to get better, of course. If you give them something, they feel better, they want to get better. This is the placebo effect. It's very well described over the decades. So scientifically, when there is no treatment, you have to have a placebo to get a true result, to make sure that what you're studying really does have an effect, not because you want it to have an effect. You can do placebo in, in surgical trials, this is sham neurosurgery. So this was done famously in a Parkinson's disease trial where people had, they had a burr hole put in, but they didn't have the fetal cells injected, a stem cell trial. So it's possible to construct placebo-controlled trials even in the most unlikely of settings. So that's what we mean by placebo. That's why we do placebo, and that's how we find out if a drug really works. And in relapsing remitting MS, we found out that beta interferon really did work. On the first beta interferon trials of Avonex, this is the effect. The reduction in relapse rate was better than placebo. It became a drug that we could use. And of course, that was the first generation. And think about the progress from there on in. But we're not so lucky in, pro in progressive disease. What are the phases of trial? You hear a lot about phases of trials, and I want to explain that to you so you feel confident in knowing what they are. How we go from a, a, a germ of an idea into the full-blown 
proof that a drug works comes from a lot of animal and scientific work to start with, the molecular work, the ideas. Then it goes into phase one, a small number of patients to make sure that it's not dangerous. And if you think of the Northwick Park experience maybe 10 years ago, that was a phase one trial that showed that that particular very powerful immunological drug was dangerous in phase one. You can't go straight to a big, large phase three trial if there's true danger. Then we move into what's called phase two, the mid-phase trial, where typically we're looking to show an effect on something where we get a quick readout in multiple sclerosis, it's the MRI scan. And all of those drugs that are now in clinical use have been through this. They've shown an effect in safe in phase one. They've shown a mid-phase trial effect classically on the scan. And then we move on to the clinical effect, which is, of course, what we're all interested in. So these are the phases of trial. So I thought just for a, the last few slides, just think about progressive disease, secondary and primary. What came out in 2012? What, was, what worked, what didn't work, what gave hint of effect. So there's a trial of myelin basic protein called the Maestro trial in second progressive MS. Some of you may have been in that trial. It a, has a nice concept to it. Myelin, myelin tolerance, that's all very multiple sclerosis. But does it work? Well, you can tell from that slide, and this is the share price of this company, that uh, within about a minute of the announcement of the trial, they lost all their money. It's a big gamble, particularly by small pharma trial companies. They can lose the entire company because although it looked promising and a, there was sound um, science behind it, it didn't actually work against placebo. The Cupid trial, so the cannabinoid trial, that has not been published yet, but has been announced uh, last year by John Zychek. So this, this is the phase three trial. This was the final phase of the trial to find out if taking artificial cannabis or cannabinoid tablets could be neuroprotective. It was a mixed primary and secondary group. So the runner and the rider was the cannabinoid against placebo. The course was running it over three years. The outcome was disability. And whilst I don't have the slides because they've not been published, it had no effect. It flatlined. This is a big study around the UK, about 500 patients. One of the reasons may be was the patients who took part in the trial were, as it were, not changing fast enough. Because if you're not changing fast enough, you actually can't show an effect. It was very difficult to show an effect. And that was a lesson learned from that. So that's a phase three trial. These are two phase three trials. Then a trial that I was involved in, the Simvastatin trial, the MS-STAT trial. This is a phase two trial. All of us, our brains are shrinking, sadly. In multiple sclerosis, a little bit more. And you can capture that. It's called atrophy. And so if we look at, this would be a starter trial scan. Two years later, and I'll show you in a minute, you can see there's a little bit of shrinkage. So some of the black spaces get a bit more. And then we can outline them in red, and we can turn them into a number. And that's what we did with 140 patients that were randomized to the dummy drug or the real drug. And that was our primary outcome. And we showed, encouragingly, that simvastatin reduced the rate of brain shrinkage by about 40%. So if we go to the one on the right, which is the two-year study, then here we are, the dummy drug, and here's the real drug, the averages. And the effects seem to occur even at the end of the first year. Now, so we're sending this into a scientific journal for critical review. I aim to get this published this year. So we've shown hint of effect or clear effect on the MRI scan. We also uh, encouragingly showed effect on disability, what's called the EDSS scale, it's particularly walking. So this is the dummy drug, 
So anything above this is a change for the worse. And you can see that being on the real drug versus the dummy drug, you had less change for the worse in red, or more change for the better, if you like. This study wasn't designed for this, but to show an effect is encouraging. And we need to move that on now into a bigger study. So what's going on this year? What's going on with trials in progressive MS this year? This is the map. There's a lot going on. And I'd encourage you, you to learn or perhaps be involved or talk to your doctors or your nurses about trials in progressive MS. Because there was, a, there was a, a time, wasn't there? And I can remember when the people said, there's nothing going on in progressive MS. What are you lot doing? There's a lot going on. So on the left are trials which are running at the moment. The INFORMS, the INFORMS trial in primary progressive MS, which is rec that's recruited but is running. These two are recruiting. You can get involved with this one with primary progressive MS here at the, at the Royal London and Barts. Here, Ty Sabri at both Queen Square and the Royal London. Speak to your doctors, is it right for you? All drugs come with risks and side effects. There are criteria you had to enter. So these are ready now. So these will be recruiting this year. Um, this is uh, a symphingolomod light drug. This is a, the sodium protector that Gavin Givanoni will be doing. And this is a, a trial which I'll be uh, leading this year. <coughs> Can't give you too much detail. Um, this will probably be announced in a couple of months' time. We're going to ambitiously, um, over about a year, recruit 440 patients with secondary progressive MS around the UK. And we're going to trial them on three drugs. Be four, four, bit, four runners and riders, one will be dummy, and three will be active. And we're going to run that trial for two years. And hopefully, well, you will hear a lot about it um, over the next two or, three now, two or three months. We can't quite announce it yet, but uh, you've seen it here first. And that's the MS Smart trial. So there is lots going on in progressive MS. And doing these trials, doing this work together, we'll find something that works and slows progression. Thank you.